Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about advanced mathematical tools for financial modeling. This is part of our lecture series that introduces the new advanced financial modeling with Python course and wraps up the prior financial modeling with Python and Excel course. So we um, already covered um, you know, kind of the basic mathematical tools for financial modeling in the first course. Um, that includes algebra, some basic probability theory, and some basic kind of statistical tools, um, including regressions, standard deviation, etc. Um, and in general, this is going to get you through most financial models. Most financial models don't have very complicated math in them. Um, it's typically mostly algebra and a little bit of probability and statistics. Um, now, some of them do definitely take more math. Um, derivatives models are a good example, especially looking at options um, and you know, any more exotic derivatives. Um, they certainly take more complicated math. Um, then also, if you're going to build some more really custom financial models, you might end up doing uh, quite a bit of math. But for most of the models that you're going to see, uh, you know, thinking about most of the models we talked about um, in the other main financial models we didn't cover, um, most of those are not going to really take any additional math tools beyond what we've learned. Um, but I think it is still useful to cover these um, basic tools uh, or more advanced tools um, in case um, people do end up working on those models which are more mathematical. So one which, which is um, useful in a lot of different settings um, is optimization. So optimization lets you maximize or minimize some quantity in your model. Um, and often in finance, we want to do that, right? We want to get the most profit or MPV. We want to have the least risk or least loss. Um, and so optimization out of all the math tools is definitely uh, the most relevant to the most financial models. Um, and in Python, we can use the SciPy library to help us with optimization. It's, it's kind of the standard library for doing optimization in Python. Um, and in general, when you think about optimization, and we're saying maximize or minimize here, but when you look, you'll find generally just uh, people talking about minimizing and not about maximizing. Um, and similarly in SciPy, you'll see minimization functions, but not maximization functions. Um, and that's because minimization and maximization are actually the same thing. Um, and you can um, make them equivalent to each other by just adding a negative sign. Um, you just take your 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 thing that you want to maximize, function you want to maximize, uh, you know, your model function, which outputs the MPV, you want to maximize that MPV, well, you just write one more function, which uh, takes the negative of that result and returns it. Um, and now you want to max minimize that, and that's going to maximize the MPV. Um, so you always minimize. If you want to maximize something, just add a minus sign before it. Um, then where I was mentioning the you know really custom complex financial models, uh, that's where a computer symbolic algebra system is helpful. Um, so if you have a lot of complicated algebra going on in your model or uh, calculus, you know you need to take derivatives, integrals, of symbolic equations, uh, you can use SymPy in Python to help with that. So you can actually 
have equations as code and you can you know uh combine different equations solve systems of equations you can take derivatives and integrals um etc so and you just work with these things as python objects so you can like have a list of equations and iterate through that list and do things with each of the equations um and you can also take any of these uh equations symbolic equations and convert it into a python function which is going to you know take all the inputs of the variables in the equation and give you uh the result of that so um very useful if you have some complicated symbolic math that you need to do uh then we also have uh, levenstein distance so this is a calculation of how similar two different strings are. Um, so, you know, it would say like cat is similar to bat, uh, but cat is not similar to remote. Um, so it gives you a numeric score to quantify this. Um, but this is useful for financial models, mainly in the context of the data pipelines in that you can um, say extract, um, you know, maybe there's some, some noise in your, whatever data you're collecting such that, um, you know, say it's like uh, you scanned in some financial statements on paper and now you've done, um, Optical character recognition OCR, and now you've got all that um, represented electronically. But there were some errors in transferring that over. Um, so this um, edit distance, Levenstein distance, you know, you could um, use that on, say, the statement items. And if something doesn't match up, so well, maybe it still has a ninety-five percent similarity, and so you can still match it up. Um, so a lot of different settings where that's useful but um, mainly in the data pipeline process in the context of financial models. Uh, and then looking more specifically at statistics, um, additional tools. So we already covered ordinary least squares, OLS regressions. And if someone just says run a regression, that's generally what they're talking about. Um, so that covers the majority of cases. Um, but there are a lot of other uh, regression models out there. Um, you know, th there are full courses out there, econometrics courses on all the different types of models that you can run and how you can, um, you know, get conclusions and predictions out of them. Um, it's definitely outside the scope of this course to discuss all the different possible ways. Um, but I'll just mention a couple here which are useful. Uh, logistic regression uh, is useful when your dependent variable, whatever you're trying to explain, is a probability itself. Like, say, you're trying to um, determine what affects the probability of default, um, then using a logistic regression would make sense. Um, and then panel regression with fixed effects is a uh, very nice technique for when you have multiple different things that you observe over time. Um, so if you have multiple different companies, financials over time, multiple different stock prices over time, et cetera, um, and you want to run a regression with those data, then panel regression is generally a good fit and fixed effects basically allow you to control for um, whatever is not changing within these um, companies over time um, or whatever, um, you know, whatever happens in a certain time period that affects all the companies in that time period. It can also help you control for that. Um, so definitely take a look at that if you've got multiple different things that you're tracking over time and you want to do a regression on that. Um, I mentioned back in the forecasting lecture um, that 
We didn't cover a lot of different time series models. Um, so you can go back and look at that lecture. I gave some resources there on how you can go learn about um, additional models there. Um, and then um, machine learning and AI um, are useful to um, classify and predict different quantities. So classification is about you know, assigning into groups um, you know, is this, is this picture of a cat or is it not of a cat? Um, that's classification. And then predicting prediction is about trying to determine the specific quantitative value of something. Um, so you might be trying to predict tomorrow's stock price, um, and you can use a machine learning model for that. Um, or you could be trying to classify is the stock going to go up in the next period or is it going to go down in the next period? Um, so, and then there's a lot of different um, applications for this. Um, and it sounds a lot more complicated than it is to carry out. Now, certainly it's a whole field. There's a lot of complication there, but there are high level packages out there that make this process fairly easy for the vast majority of tasks that you would want to apply this to. If you need to have a really, really high performance model, um, or it's for a very specialized task, then, um, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of complicated work to go into it. But in general, uh, for probably 99% of, of potential applications, it really is not difficult to build these. If you can run an OLS regression with stats models, you can run a machine learning model with scikit-learn. Now, it does take a little more knowledge to understand when you should apply each model and what situation, uh, but there are also auto machine learning packages which uh, kind of go through that process for you. Um, so that can reduce the entire machine learning process once you have your data prepared and ready to go then just down to like four or five lines of code. Um, so a lot of people get threatened by just hearing AI. It sounds really complicated, um, but uh, people have automated so much of this process that it's not that difficult as an average user of machine learning. So then um, the resources I'm showing here um, that you can use to learn these topics in the meantime until I'm able to post any more particular lectures on them. Uh, we have uh, how to approach optimization using SciPy, uh, how to use SimPy in order to do computer algebra and um, calculus and things like that. Um, we can use the fuzzy wuzzy package in order to calculate Levenstein distance in an easy way. Um, we can um, look at doing logistic re regression using stats models, and this is kind of a softer introduction to that. Um, same thing with panel regression. Um, so there we can use a package called linear models, um, which is focused almost exclusively on panel uh, approaches. Um, and there's a, uh, basically a full list of the models that are available in stats models, which is quite a few. Um, and then linear models also has additional models beyond the basic panel regression. Um, and there's some additional statistics related tools in SciPy that I like there. Um, and then I added um, a few different resources here on machine learning. Um, so just kind of a general, um, you know, light introduction to it, uh, a couple different resources for that. Um, and then looking at um, using a couple different libraries. Um, so generally, um, scikit-learn is the kind of um, gold standard for easy machine learning in Python, uh, as long as you don't need it to be really high performance. Um, and then Keras has emerged as the um, you know, easy high-level library for doing deep learning, which is what um, people generally refer to, uh, are referring to when they say AI. Um, 
and um, that I mentioned this auto machine learning where um, you don't even have to pick what model you're going to use. Like that part is also automated. Um, there's this package called auto SK learn um, where you just put a few lines and you have a well-fitted uh, machine learning model. So um, pretty interesting that um, we've hit that point in development in that field that um, you really don't have to know much at all and you can go and apply machine learning. So um, that's a quick introduction to more advanced uh, mathematical tools which are relevant to financial modeling. Um, and again, I hope to be able to post additional lectures on uh, these topics more specifically, but you have these resources to go off for, for now. So thanks for listening and see you next time.